In this video, we will talk about the IEC 61850 configuration, and we will see two practical examples in this video, how to create a GOOSE configuration and how to put in place a process bus communication between RelyOn 615 and RelyOn 620 relays. This process is similar for all ABB relays. Detailed information can be found in the IEC 61850 Engineering Guide. First, we start with creating the process bus configuration. REF 615 will be a sender. In the application configuration, we just need to insert the SMV sender function block into the configuration. You do not need to connect it anywhere. Then we need to save and close the tool. Next, we need to open the IEC 61850 configuration tool. We select the process bus communication from the list and we just need to connect it to the receiver relay. Let's go and check what kinds of parameters we can see in the sample values control. When you connect the dataset to the receiver, the tool automatically creates a sampled value control element. According to the IEC 61850LE specification, we need to leave the app ID value at 4000 and the MAC address must be unique within the substation network. The tool keeps the MAC address of the newly created sampled values control element unique within the project. Users can also manually change MAC address values. The VLAN ID can be changed here. The next task will be to put in place the GOOSE communication. In this application, we will use blocking-based current protection logic, where REF 615 is our outgoing feeder and REF 620 is our incomer feeder. If instantaneous overcurrent protection picks up on your outgoing feeder, it must block the instantaneous overcurrent protection of the incomer feeder. First, we need to create a data set and put in correct data. To create a new data set, we click on the Create Data Set icon and give it a name. Then by double clicking on the data set, we go to the menu where we can add entries. At the moment, we have zero entries and we can add new ones by selecting Data Attributes. But first, we need to select Logical Device, then Logical Node, which in our case would be PHIP TOC, then Correct Data Attributes for Startup Current, which is STR General, and this button will assign the element to the data set. Then, according to the IEC 61850 standard, the status signal must always be followed by a quality signal, so we assign the quality signal as well and click OK to save the changes. There are different limits for numbers of entries and data sets in different ABB products. This information can be found in the IEC 61850 Engineering Guide. We can assign this data set to the receiver and the tool will automatically create a GOOSE control block for this GOOSE data set. Then here we will look at what kinds of parameters we can change. When you create everything in PCM 600, it automatically creates a unique app ID and MAC address for every GOOSE control block as is required by the standard. But if you have different requirements, you can change the app ID and MAC address. If you use a VLAN configuration in your project, you can change it here. Then we can change the maximum time here. The value is 10,000 milliseconds or 10 seconds by default and it's defined by how often you send GOOSE messages in the network for supervision purposes. Now everything is OK, and we can save and close the tool. Then, on the receiver side, we will continue to configure our process bus and GOOSE communications. First, we need to open the application configuration tool for the receiver relay.
Then we can go to the Communication tab and for receiving sample values, we need to insert the SMV receiver function block and connect it to the process function block. This may be ULTVTR1 for receiving three-phase voltages or ULTVTR2 if you need to assign only one-phase voltage for synchro check logic. In this case, we want to receive three-phase voltages. If you want to have residual voltage, you can assign it to the RASTVTR function block. So now, the process bus configuration between REF6115 and REF620 is done. More information about the IEC 61850 configuration can be found in the IEC 61850 Engineering Guide, which is available for every ABB product. Now we need to configure the GOOSE communication. And to do that, we need to first put the GOOSE receiver binary function block into the configuration. We're choosing binary because we're going to receive the binary signal and different types of signals may also be received. Measured values, integer values, interlocking signals, enumerated and double point signals. I'm going to change its name because in real applications you usually receive a lot of goose messages from different sources and I want to specify that this is an REF615 overcurrent start. Then we create a new variable from the valid output which represents the quality of the signal. So if the quality is not good or communication is not good between the relays, the valid signal would be false or zero. If everything is okay, the valid signal is true or one. On the next step, we need to connect this variable to the function block. To do that, we need to find the function block using the search function. We can also specify that this is a function block. Here we found this function block and to receive the signal, we assign it from the goose receiver function block. It's all we need to do in the application configuration. To finalize this configuration on the receiver side, we need to go into the Signal Matrix tool, open up the Goose tab, and connect the signal we're receiving to the Goose receiver function block in the configuration. In the real project, you may have many more signals on top, so you need to have the right number of function blocks in the configuration to receive these signals. Then we save and close the tool. We have not gone through one aspect of IEC 61850 configuration, which is client-server or vertical communication. When you create the configuration in PCM600, it automatically creates datasets with most of the signals within them. And if you create the configuration from scratch, these datasets are not assigned to the clients. The following clients may be used. SCADAs, RTUs, or station HMIs. If the datasets are not assigned to the clients, you can assign them by yourself by right-clicking on the dataset and selecting Send to All, or just selecting which dataset is connected to the client. It's strongly not recommended to delete datasets for client-server communications because these datasets are also used for internal event generation and their deletion may cause problems. 
So if you do not need to send data to the SCADA or RTU system, the correct way is to unassign this data set from the clients instead of deleting it. In the Report Control tab, we can set up the Report Control block of our client server, and most of the settings are good by default. You may change triggering options if you have a specification to do it differently. Some SCADA systems require report control blocks to have a report ID, and PCM600 does not automatically create a report ID. To generate report IDs, you can right-click on the control element, select Regenerate Report ID Values, and the tool will automatically generate report IDs for all report control blocks. You can look at what is in the dataset by double-clicking on it, and you can edit it if needed.